a lot of the reasons why we set the game in a science fiction sort of uh universe is that uh, we want to be able to do anything really put anything into the gameplay like oh there's a monster that flies or levitates or there's a there's a there's a tool that you have that you know can have this tracking system or this weird i don't know there there's security systems that use this these uh holograms and stuff that don't exist today and it's uh, justified why it's in the game for the simple reason that it's set in a, in a sci-fi environment if we were making a uh, a contemporary game or a game that, that takes place now, <clears throat> then it would be more gamey to have these things in there because you'd realize, oh, this is only a visualization that I see as a player playing this game, whereas the characters that are in the game, the in-game ca- characters in that universe, in that space, would not see these things because they don't exist in, in, in this reality. Right. But we can do anything. Uh, and it's all like for, for for the sake of allowing everything to be gameplay governed. If we can come up with it, the idea, like, let's have a monster that behaves like this, or let's give the player a tool that 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 works like this. Then we can do, uh, then we can put it in there and just say, oh, th- there's a future technology that allows this uh, to work. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with the monsters. To to loop back to the monsters, like we we just we just want to be able to do anything and have like a, a fauna of monsters, right? Uh, you know, where, where where anything is possible, so they can have. They can levitate or they can, you know, they can crawl around on the walls or they can be like insect like or they can be like we, we want to just be able to to th- throw stuff at the players. Uh, uh, first and foremost, it needs to serve the gameplay like it needs to challenge the players in interesting ways and not just be, oh, this is a bullet sponge enemy. Uh, and it makes it takes more damage to kill it and it makes more damage against you. And that's why it's difficult. That's not a fun way to, to design it. Right. We want to make something that's challenging in interesting ways, uh, first and foremost. And then secondly, also be creepy and scary. And I think you guys accomplished the creepy and scary. Yeah. <laughs> very, very well. Yeah. I know. So far, we have we have sort of like uh, meat and potatoes enemies in the in, in the game, uh, like you know, humanoid shaped, and uh, they can they can be a lot of them that move sort of like traditional, like they just run around the ground. Right. So there's no no flying enemies or anything like that. There isn't a lot of vertical gameplay at all, really. Mm-hmm. You don't have a reason to, to look up into the ceiling or anything. Uh, but th- w- w- there will be stuff, you know. There will be other stuff than this. I don't know that I want more, Simon. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> we were very... It was mostly Colin and I that played, and we were pretty overwhelmed by just the ones on the ground. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. But yes, we have a lot of ideas for, for new monsters and new awesome. environmental cool. like conditions and hazards and stuff that just, you know mess with you there's there's there was fog very thick fog in the in the uh, alpha uh, expedition mm-hmm. and and there will be darkness you know complete darkness and there will be monsters that you 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 can't shine lights on which is yeah that was already in the alpha actually mm-hmm. they wake up if you shine lights on them but yep. there might be monsters that you need to shine a light on and if they're like you know imagine some sort of a venus trap sort of thing on the wall and right. then as you pass it by, in order to to avoid it, you need to constantly shine a light on it as you as you pass it, or because wow. it yeah. sort of retracts back into a shell or right. whatever. And if you don't, it'll attack you, you know. And there's no way to kill it because it's and you sort of accept that because it's a static enemy at least. It yeah. doesn't mm-hmm. chase you. Right. But if it's in if it's in like a narrow corridor or anything, you can't get past it without actually always you know, as you move close to it, shine on it with a light. And things like that is just, you know, aren't necessarily, you know, wasting ammunition or, or using your weapon uh, in any way, but actually more like, okay, there's other things in, in at work, you know, or other ways to interact uh, or beat sort of these monsters. Uh, those ideas we love. Yeah. Yeah, we watched uh, some of the, the IGN game footage. You guys played with IGN. Uh, mm-hmm. and you did 12 minutes of gameplay with them. It looked like that was a separate level from what the players experienced for the alpha. Do you have yes. a plan for how many levels are going to be available when the game launches? I can't go into any detail about it right now. Okay. okay. But we're going <laughs> to we're going to go out with with some news about that. Uh Okay. So you, when I mean, you I wake can... up in, in the US tomorrow, 
you'll you'll have the information. Okay. Well, damn. I mean, I, I definitely won't it's, put it out today if you yeah. want to talk about it. Like, I, <laughs> not, yeah, my lips are sealed, it, bro. Like, <laughs> it's um, uh, well, if when when people watch this, they they should go to our our YouTube channel and and check the the latest video okay. for information about that. But yes, it's not a traditional campaign, but it it's based more on, on updating the game with new content all the time. Okay. Uh. uh so we we, uh, we were we were toying around in the beginning with procedural generation mm -hmm. uh, in the in the beginning of the project and we, and there's actually maybe some interviews or some tweets or something out there <clears throat> early on that sort of uh, you know alludes to something around you know th those concepts being in the game. Okay. But what we decided was that, and we tried it out for a long time. That's why we took like three over three years from from the beginning of of uh, you know, development until s there was an alpha, really, okay. because we've been working so hard on these tools and we've been trying them out. And we've come to the conclusion that procedurally generated stuff, maps um, uh, specifically, become sort of, yes, there's an, an uh, you know, endless amount of variations, but it becomes sort of soulless mm -hmm. and, you know, doesn't have a lot of character or there's something missing. Yeah, and, and uh, so it's it's a cool concept in theory, but it's really really difficult to to deliver on, and and uh, I don't think any game has done it. You know, you can accept that sort of stuff in Spelunky. Yes, you know, yeah, that's the one that but, comes to mind for me for sure. Yeah, and, and so games have done it correctly. Yeah, but once you go into first person shooter territory, it, it, there are higher requirements, I think, uh, and it's it's you get more issues with how AI is supposed to, you know, solve, you know, navigating through that uh, environment and, uh, you know, in order for it to not be, you know, too repetitive or too, like, there, there's a lot of issues. Um, uh, and one other thing I need to mention is the okay. fact that once you procedurally generate stuff on every individual uh, user's computer, then suddenly no one has any bragging rights because no one's played that same level. And right. we wanted we wanted to make a game where there's bragging rights, and we want to make because it's going to be a freaking hard game, and yeah. we 2%, want people to be yep. to, yeah. <laughs> two percent of people. people <laughs> exactly, <laughs> two percent of people are going to have bragging rights. <laughs> Everyone else is going to have I don't know, be crying. Yeah, but um, <laughs> so uh, we wanted we wanted to create a, a community where people start making you know tutorial videos like this is how we did it. This is our suggestion and, you know, people being interested in, oh, I wonder what what this team are doing, you know, when they're, they they live stream on Twitch. I want to see how they take on this map or something. So we wanted the community to, to focus on the same set of maps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and not be like everyone has procedurally generated stuff, you know. So we've, we've, we've just come up with a concept that sort of marries uh, – a little bit of procedural generation that we are using those tools internally within the studio, uh, which allows us to to uh, have a sort of a high rate of production for new expeditions, but also inject some love with some actual curation and hands on, you know, with with level designers actually uh, injecting some more uh, inspiration and love into these right. uh, these things. Um, but yeah, that's that's about as much as I can reveal at this point i feel well i think that i think you guys made the right choice because if colin and i when we played through the alpha had that map been procedurally generated we would have never discovered that left was the way to go because left wouldn't have been the way to go every time and so well, obviously like shit we, we, we would have been beating our heads against it yeah uh, we would need to give to give the players the ability to replay that same generated map right, until right. they beat it not just <laughs> one attempt it's one of those things where like we we uh, even with the maps that we will be in the game in the end just like the, the, like the alpha map the um geometry will be the same mm -hmm. but you will not always find the key card you're looking for in the same place right. uh you can't like remember the name of the key card or the the zone that you're supposed to go to the next attempt because that might change right yep. 
so those things are randomly randomly generated from uh, you know every attempt to the next and then also placement of monsters and what you know mix of monsters are within within a room so and that changes everything because you come to a room where last time there was a huge battle and this time maybe it's empty and right. then the, the the next room that you just breeze through the last attempt is suddenly there's a scout in there and there's potential you know then that's where the big battle or the hard you know sneak pass you know uh segment is so right. it changes what part of the map becomes super interesting and and difficult uh when we we like to think that we've find a found a ni- nice balance there where y- there is enough that is the same from attempt to attempt f- in order for squads to learn from their mistakes and being able to like let's try this strategy and let's bring those tools instead and, and go th- with this approach uh but there's enough that's different for, in order for everyone to have to be on their toes because you can't open a door and buy, be like this this next room is empty i know that from last attempt because there might just be a, a big guy just on the other side of the door you know 